but they did not provide details. 30,000 people have been told to evacuate. New numbers into our newsroom from CAL FIRE show 18,000 acres have already burned, as well as an unknown number of structures. Since the fire started early this morning, there is no containment at this hour. At a state of emergency, and a state of emergency has been issued for Butte County. There are mandatory evacuations in Magalia, Concow, Butte Creek, Canyon, Butte Valley, and Paradise. The whole lower side of Paradise is totally engulfed in flames right now. The Pacifica, Princeton area, Neal Road, Feather River Hospital, all is engulfed in flames right now. Not one home will be left standing. This is all happening in north central Butte County in Feather River Canyon, west of Highway 70. Now, part of Highway 70 and several nearby roads have also been shut down. This video from Snapchat shows you why flames are burning right down to the roadways there where people are trying to get out. You can see trees are getting torched. Strike teams, meanwhile, from across the Bay Area are heading to Butte County. That includes this team from San Francisco, made up of 22 firefighters, five engines, and a battalion chief. Also, strike team 2870C from Oakland, which is already at the scene. They posted this photo from their ride up. And Berkeley Engine 305 is also on the way. They say they'll be working with crews from Alameda County, Fremont, and Hayward. Yeah, smoke from the campfire is spreading and it's spreading fast. It has already cloaked Ukiah in darkness, which is about 150 miles southwest in Mendocino County. Uh, these pictures show it almost looks like nighttime there, and that's the middle of the afternoon. Even uh, further south, all of that billowing smoke has also prompted an air quality advisory for all of us here in the Bay Area, taking a live look from our Mount Vaca camera. Uh, let's check that. You can see the haze, kind of a layer inside there. Air quality officials say that we'll probably see and smell smoke uh, for the next uh, several days, even if it remains high in the sky. Let's get over to our chief meteorologist, Paul Diano, for the latest on these conditions. Paul, looking out the windows here in San Francisco, you can see the smoke. I can. It's, it's a pretty serious situation in the East Bay and North Bay. The AQI numbers, anything over 100 is considered unhealthy. They're up around 250 or 260 right now in Santa Rosa. So it's, it's a pretty simple equation. If you're in the East Bay or North Bay, you don't need to be outside. Don't be outside. It's a lot better air quality in your house, even though you're going to smell the smoke. Uh, it's a pretty nasty situation. It rivals the air quality that we had back with the uh, wine country wildfires 13 months ago. That's how bad it is out there. Let's take a look at the conditions in and around the campfire itself. We're looking at a temperature of 61 degrees, very dry, relative humidity 12%, and wind gusts 28 miles per hour. But obviously, as we always say, right next to the fire, uh, they're usually much stronger. Red flag warning continues until tomorrow morning. So why does it expire? Because the the wind is going to decrease, but the fire danger stays high. It's just at its worst for the next, let's say, 12 to 14 hours. Uh, wind gusts as high as 60 miles per hour in our Bay Area hills. Look at the haze over San Francisco. Visibility is way down. It's milder than average. We're in the 70s out there. But the big story this afternoon, this evening, is the smoke. It will be prevalent at least through tonight, where the air quality is not just bad. It is very bad in the East Bay and North Bay right now. That's your Picks Now forecast. All well, thank you. Now to the tragedy out of Southern California. Hundreds lining up today to donate blood for the survivors of last night's shooting at a bar in Thousand Oaks, where 12 were killed and at least 25 others injured. One of the victims, Deputy Sergeant Ron Helis, he was the first officer at the scene. Earlier today, his body was taken in a procession through the streets of Thousand Oaks. Helis is being called a hero. And a Napa native was among those killed. 18-year-old Alana Housley attended Vintage High School. We've also learned Elena was the niece of actress Tamara Moore, uh, Mowry. The family released a statement saying in part, quote, Our hearts are broken. Elena was an incredible young woman with so much life ahead of her, and we are devastated that her life was cut short in this manner. And the bouncer of the bar was also among the victims. Witnesses say 23-year-old Justin Meeks was one of the first people shot. Police say at around 11.20 last night, the gunman, dressed all in black, walked into the bar, set off a smoke device, and then fired multiple rounds. By the time officers closed in on the gunman, he was already dead. Police say the gunman, 28-year-old Ian Long, was a Marine Corps veteran and used a 45 caliber handgun. They also said he appeared to be killing at random as people tried to escape the scene. 
So then our friends got the bar stools and they started slamming it against the window so we could get out. <laughs> Now, we've also learned that a group of survivors from the Las Vegas mass shooting uh, 13 months ago, also at last night's shooting, ironically, Nicholas Champion says that he and his friends were on the dance floor when the shots rang out. Unfortunately, it's the second time in about a year and a month that this has happened. Uh, I was at the Las Vegas Route 91 mass shooting. We all are a big family, and unfortunately, um, this family got hit twice. Earlier today, Governor-elect Gavin Newsom responded to the shooting calling for action and an end to these types of tragedies. This is America. It's got to change. This doesn't happen anywhere else on planet Earth. And we can't let folks forget that. Can't lose sight of that. Can't allow this to be normalized. Now the flag of the White House has been lowered to half-staff tonight in honor of the victims of the shooting. It'll remain at half-staff until sunset Saturday night. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is in the hospital right now. We've learned the 85-year-old fractured three ribs after falling in her office last night. She went home after the fall but was taken to the hospital this morning when she was experiencing discomfort. Justice Ginsburg has been on the high court since 1993. She is the oldest of the nine justices and one of the court's four liberals. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is out in a letter yesterday to Chief of Staff John Kelly. Sessions wrote, at your request, I am submitting my resignation. The president named Matthew Whitaker as his interim replacement. Whitaker has been critical, openly critical, of the Mueller probe, uh, Mueller probe into Russian meddling, but now he will be the one to oversee it. Democrats are calling on Whitaker to recuse himself. Meanwhile, CNN is reporting that Mueller's team is now preparing its final report on the investigation. So far, Mueller has indicted 35 people and companies, including some of the president's top campaign officials. As for a permanent replacement for the attorney general, President Trump is said to be considering former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie as an option. Additionally, sources say Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi is also under consideration. Uh, Christy, Bondi, and the White House are not responding to requests for comment. Tesla's board of directors has a new chair, Robin Denholm. She is the first female Tesla board director. Right now, Denholm works for Australia's largest telecommunications company and will leave her post there after her six months' notice. Meantime, the man Denholm is replacing, CEO Elon Musk, will be helping her during the transition. This new management shuffle at Tesla is part of the settlement with the Securities and Exchange Commission after Musk tried to take Tesla private back in August. E-scooter company Spin will soon have a new owner, Ford announced that it will be buying the startup. The car company sees it as a way to diversify the way Americans commute and travel. And right now, it's only in 13 cities. Ford plans to expand it to 100 cities in the next 18 months. I'm Dennis Adal. Here's the latest in Bay Area sports. Willie McCovey passed away on Halloween Day at the age of 80. He was larger than life. And today, a life-size goodbye was held at AT&T Park. Wilson Walker with the salute to Stretch. I'm so grateful and thankful that I'm here today. But most of all, that I got to be a teammate and a friend of his. On what would have been a fine day for baseball, this was a day for memories and more than a few tears as the Giants said farewell to the great Willie McCovey from Mobile, Alabama, beloved adopted son of San Francisco. And he was humble, he was kind, a, a real plus to the community of San Francisco. I think Willie McCovey, more than any other Giants player I can think of, was balanced both as a human being and as a great player, and that's why everybody loves him so much. I want to thank the Giants for giving Mac that cove out there, and I want to thank Mac for allowing me to hit a bunch of baseballs in his cove. <laughs> You could ask him how he's doing, it would always be the same answer. Oh, I'm fine. Got a ball game, it'll all be good. But when he left the stadium, there was an endless parade of people that were giving him high fives and knuckles. They just wanted to touch him. They just wanted to tell him how much they loved him. And as I watched him, 
be wheeled away with that attitude. I would hold my cane. And I would say, I want to be like him. You did not have to be a Giants fan. Today, more about how baseball can tie a city and different generations together and how some qualities simply transcend the sport of baseball. In San Francisco, Wilson Walker, KPIX 5. That ballpark will never be the same. The 49ers host the New York football Giants on Monday night. The Giants are 1-7. and seven. Nick Mullins 49ers are undefeated. Mullins made quite the first impression as a starting quarterback last week against the Raiders. Making a good first impression is nothing new for Mullins. He met with the 49er coaching staff before the 2017 draft, dressed to impress. Nick was buttoned up tight. Um, came in like he was interviewing for a quality control position. Did a good job. Skangarillo, our quarterback coach, had told us about him for a while. And the first thing that stood out is when he came in, thought he looked like Rich's younger son. Um, so we, we kind of gave him a lot of crap for it on, on why he liked him so much. Meanwhile, the Raiders host the Red Hot Chargers on Sunday. L.A. has won five straight and has emerged as a contender in the AFC. 36-year-old Phillip Rivers will start his 201st straight game. Derek Carr is just hoping to make it through the game in one piece. He was sacked seven times last Thursday by the 49ers. For the season, he's been sacked fifth most in the NFL, but he won't get any sympathy from brother David, who set an NFL record in 2002 when he was sacked 76 times. Do you lean on your brother at all? That's like this where it's a like, Oh, man, it's not that bad. Uh, <laughs> man, it's not that bad. Those, the, my guys are awesome, man. He did mess with me a little bit, but... No, nah, man, it's not like, oh, man, how do you deal with this or that? No, nah, it's, not, it's not like that at all. <laughs> David's career didn't last very long. Here is the Thursday Top 5. At number 5, former Archbishop Mitty star Aaron Gordon threw down the alley-oop and struck a pose while doing it. At number 4, Pacers big man Domas Abonis doesn't trust or fear the process. Dunks on Phillies Joel Embiid. Of course, it's tough to block a shot when your arm is being held down. At number 3, Stephen no Adams trying for a poster right of his own, but <laughs> come up just a little short of the rim. Fire the ball off the backboard. The backboard. At number two, Hawks and Knicks, Miles Plumley and Ennis Cantor fighting for the ball. rebound. Plumley gets That'd the ball and the takedown. Roll him over. Showing the lights, as we would say at Northgate High School. At number one, Drew Brees has the best completion percentage in the NFL, even more efficient throwing to his kids. He posted, my wife must really love me. She gets the kids fed, bathed, quiet and ready for bed and then dad walks in the door i love that because any any parent knows what that's like oh the kids yeah go to bed. and my husband does the exact same thing <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, like the same boy. kid going around. Yeah. Like, how many and, kids was he at? And his little lot. daughter was on the bed just taking it all in. But it. Uh, Drew Brees is yeah. 39 years old. Yeah. He's in, having an MVP type season. He's got yeah. 18 touchdowns and just one interception. He is rolling. So he's in a good mood. The family is too. Very cool. Hey, kudos spot. to the Giants. Yeah, God bless yeah. Willie McCovey. Yeah. And, and what a nice send off huh, today. That story that Kruka was talking about, I would see it. I would see Willie McCovey. He would leave before the game actually yeah. you know, ended some, sometime. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, fans would gather around him. And when Kruka said they really wanted to touch him, they really did. Mm -hmm. wow. And the, the, good, the cool thing about Willie Mack is that he acknowledged everybody, yeah, right? Did. You didn't have to be somebody to have have him uh, understand that you're in his presence. And he was a good man. I'm going to miss 44 being out there. Yeah. 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 Super, super human. All right. Thanks, Dennis. We stream our KPI X5 News at 5 o'clock every day on CBSSF.com. And we'll be back in less than 60 minutes. PIX Now News is sponsored by Chevron. Proud to support STEM education in the Bay Area. Meet our STEM standout, Nicole Collins Puri. TechBridge Girls is focusing on exciting, educating, and equipping girls to really see STEM as a vehicle to economic mobility and better life's chances. We're creating an environment that says, we see you, 
we hear you, and we understand your journey. Chevron and KPIX5 teaming up to support STEM education in the Bay Area. KPIX5 News. Expect more. That was truly a day that altered our times. For on that evening, KPIX went on the air. The Beatles are just minutes away from the Bay Area tonight. We're not going to stand by and let our people be uh, shoved around. We must escalate our protest against the war. But they come here with the purpose of enjoying themselves. There's another aftershock. He's really tall up there. I'm a soldier in the people's army. in the end zone. In the Bay Area, change has always been part of the story. But all this time, We've had changes too. KPIX 5, proud to be Northern California's first television station. For 70 years, we've been trusted to tell your story. And whatever comes next. The latest in this original report. No, that's one thing that will never change. KPIX 5 News. Expect more. You ready? I'm ready. I'm 10 steps ahead of you. I'm not buying what you're saying to me, but I'm going to let you dig your hole. No, 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 no. You don't hustle me. Now we're getting somewhere. You're making up a story now. I can tell. I'm like a truth machine. We're done. Judge Judy, weeknights at 7.30 on KPIX 5. Knob Hill, 1948. A tower goes up on this landmark hotel. San Francisco's pioneer television station. The call letters KPIX were short for pictures as we brought the very first ones into local living rooms. From wherever the news happens. The signing of the Treaty of Peace with Japan. And along with the Bay Area, we've been innovating ever since. KPIX has arranged for this first live telecast of open heart surgery. You ever seen this little gadget? We call it the Live Eye Van. This is kind of the first computer of the 1990s. Virtual reality is past its awkward teenage years. Hi, my name is Pepper. But like all great pioneers. And this is your PixNow update. We keep moving forward. The view from Sky Drone 5. 70 years of Bay Area stories. KPIX 5 News. Expect more. What would you do if a date asked you how much you weigh? Leave. Flap them. Cut them. It was going so well until... Ask him how much his mama weighs. <laughs> oh, we talking about weight, huh? Well, how much your mama weigh? All new Family Feud. You ain't got to worry about how much I weigh. You won't be feeling nothing over here. <laughs> Family View, weeknights at 7 on KPIX 5. Behind every iconic moment is a story. No one in the country believed that we could do it. And for 70 years, KPIX 5 has been bringing the Bay Area sports story home. How about just one more at bat? How about a couple more World Series and we can keep doing this? From the first televised game in Northern California, we've had a front row seat. Tired of that chucking nonsense? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. For the highlights. Oh, the band is out on the field! The heartbreaks and the heroes that changed the game. Rain is a blessing. Just an outstanding football game. Let's go! World champion. The moments that changed us all. It's a madhouse at Candlestick. We never get tired of talking about Bay Area sports, but tonight it's one for the record books. 70 years of champions and counting. KPIX 5 News. Expect more. There is a unique power in truth. What's your message to the people who could do something? And whether the story is around the globe, across the nation, or down the street. Look at this. We'll find it. It amazes me that you were able to see your house destroyed and you went right back to work. And I would much rather be out there helping. Because every evening, we want to put the power of truth in your hands. Good evening, I'm Jeff Glore, and we are going to begin the broadcast tonight. The CBS great. Evening News with Jeff Glore. Original reporting. One voice. 
we are planning to mobilize can ignite a movement. We want to claim Alcatraz Island for all of the natives in this land. And the Bay Area has been home to many. In a state of extreme emergency on the campus, it was necessary to call out the National Guard. Women were in complete command. And San Jose State joined with San Francisco State. The demonstration.